This is going to be like Nate's semi brush gems, uh, and this one actually works most of the time. It does have some serious bugs, but for the most part, it does what you want. Uh, the gym is called Ravel, um, and I talked about it a little bit at the last NDRB, and I think I was ranting, which is not uncommon, but um, essentially, this is a JSON presentation layer gym. Um, and the reason why the guy wrote it and the reason why I was so excited to find it is uh, the, re the way that people generally su suggest that you write JSON, like all the tutorials and stuff, JSON uh, in Rails apps, and even the official Rails way right now is you go and you like modify your model and you change some stuff, like you define an as JSON or to JSON in that class, depending on what version of Rails you're in. And that just magically works it out. Now there are a lot of problems, I think, with that, one of which is it becomes really hard to maintain once you have the same model that has to do as JSON for different views, because you basically have to either uh, go monkey patch rails, uh, or you have to um, basically put in a bunch of cyclomatic complexity into your, into your application. So uh, that's above and beyond the fact that you're putting presentation code into your model, which is just, I don't know, it's not really, it doesn't seem very Ruby or very Rails-ish to me. So Ravel is a, uh, it's like ERB or, or Haml or anything else, it's just a way to mark up uh, your views, your JSON or XML views for that matter. I don't know why I didn't mention XMLs, just because I hate it probably. <laughs> um, and don't consider it a thing, usually. <coughs> So this is a basic one, and all I had time to work up. You can do a lot more cool stuff, but this is Ravel.Ravel. Um, I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, Ravel, Ravel, exactly. Um, so I made the super stupid post authors uh, models in this thing, and just to find a couple things. I was going to do performance testing. Uh, what I found out was the performance between Ravel and 2JSON is basically very small, so the numbers aren't very interesting. Good, which is good. Um, but I have these two things to find. Um, in my controller, I'm just doing, these are two of the two pertinent things. Is that showing up reasonably? It is. So as JSON, it's just a thing that calls the normal recommended way. Um, and Ravel is just calling that, that view template. Um, okay, so I'm accomplishing the same thing with these two, these two pieces of code, basically. Um, I feel like I'm going to make the font size bigger, is what I feel like. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is the same thing. Uh, the only difference is this lives down in, in model land. This lives in view land. Um, the reason why you would do this, I think I explained a little bit, but uh, it's always struck me as wrong when I've had to write a JSON thing. Um, because what you end up doing is you end up jacking your controller full of view code, uh, which I think is also stupid for the most part, uh, where you end up making your model look like a view. I think those are both really bad ideas because once you start having to do multiple uh, API versions or uh, you know you have multiple views where you're just getting limited information, think about Ajax, like there are a lot of different ways that you want to present information about a model in Ajax. And what you end up doing is just writing your own two JSON <coughs> and controllers or you know you write a method that lives in your model, and it's just completely, it just doesn't make sense to have it there. It's not a business logic thing, it is a view presentation thing. So having a view about it is really cool, I think. Um, so I wrote a test, which um, I'll make all of this available. Um, on GitHub after this, but these are just two stupid tests that I wrote, um, 
and I just create a bunch of posts. And <coughs> I think this is actually more readable up there than it is here. Okay, so these are benchmark tests. If you don't know about benchmark tests in, uh, in Rails, they're pretty cool. Um, essentially what it does is you write a performance test, which Rails has generators for, and it will run the test four times. Uh, so you get a nice averaged out number. So I wrote these um, while I was sitting over here, actually. Um, so this is the Rabble test. So it's 1.3 seconds. Um, and that's 1.2. Not a huge difference. It'll probably matter if you're doing this in production, but I'm doing this as a demo, so as far as I'm concerned, they're the same. That's like great, right? You guys all trust my word? Um, so a thing that I didn't have time to do, uh, there's a lot of control in Ravel to do uh, basically parent-child relationships, which is where this really shines, I think. Um, if you've done that with as JSON, you end up, it's a big rabbit hole you go down, and it's not fun, and debugging gets hard. So Ravel is built to do that easily. You just do like child thing and then attributes on that. And way easier. Uh, Miles probably has more experience actually with it at this point than I do, because you guys use it on, and David used it on the project last month, I know. It's really, I really liked it. Um, there's some other things you can do. You can, you know, basically create virtual attributes if you want right there in, in, in that Apple file, so you're not, again, dirtying up your model with, with what is essentially view information. Um, you can alias attributes from them correctly, uh, yeah. so that you know they're they're I guess named better for a, a human potentially consuming your API or you know the end user of your API or what have you. Um, I guess if it were me and we just it didn't seem it would, none of it ever bothered me enough to to fork the gem and do anything to it. I'm not super stoked on some of the syntax. I would do it differently in some cases. Um, but other than that, I thought it worked very I thought, well. To me, I mean, if you have to do versioning of your API, for that reason alone, <laughs> I would probably use Ravel. Because if you try to do the 2 JSON route, um, you know, with different versions, it's going to get ugly really quick. Um, and you may end up with some extra code, you know, if you pull your API out and, API out and uh, put it in different controllers and use Ravel and stuff like that. But I think it's going to end up being a lot more manageable, a lot cleaner in the future. One thing this also enables, which I think is cool, is uh, if you're using Rails 3.1, then in theory you can have ERB interpreted Ravel, so you can metaprogram your Ravel. Uh, <laughs> always a good idea. I, this is a virtual thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this, <laughs> alias this, this is an alias attribute kind of deal, which you end up doing a lot in views, or I have ended up doing. So, <laughs> you put methods in there too, or? Yes. Yes, you can. can and what about logic? Can you do if version is one? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's actually Ruby, so. Yeah. Okay. Cool. If you really wanted to, I guess you so could put your model there. in your view. <laughs> do it like <laughs> dot, dot net 1.0 style. <laughs> Maybe put a connection in there. Uh, I'm just, okay. I'm just, I'm just talking out loud here. Great ideas. I read uh, somebody was somebody was talking about they they said the one true way everybody says there's one true way to do APIs but I think that and there's like ten different ways so I mean I, I think it comes down to there's not really that many not very good ways to do it but one guy was saying that you should change the content type to you know to to change your version so you end up having a different content yeah, type for each I, version. I think I, that like, I don't. Yeah, they he was basically like saying this. use headers and use yeah. response codes to control your API version. I'm like, that's in theory a great idea. Like and as soon things. as you write me a gem that will handle all that <laughs> seamlessly, I will be all over that. Until then, I'm going to have API slash view. Yeah, because he was talking about, well, then you can put it all on the same method, but if you have big changes to your API, it's, it falls down pretty quick. So. Well, but you can just put slash one on the end of your your API connection URL and then everywhere you go and fetch things it just has it there. It's the same thing. So I was trying to figure out this out. If you're using liquid models, 
Mm -hmm. We use as JSON, and we also have liquid methods to find the calls. Could you use this to, to sort of channel through that kind of thing too? Um, it seems like you probably could. I haven't specifically done that, but um, yeah, that seems totally reasonable. Uh, yeah, especially if you did it with, if you had a little ERB in there to like pick up your liquid methods and pull them in, it would be really easy. I don't even know if you would need to do that. That would be cool. That's a good idea. <laughs> the more instance variables. Use more global variables. Uh, anyone want to like suggest other ways to do APIs? I think APIs are like the the thing to talk about right now. So, so here's your chance to be in the site, guys. <laughs> is there any reason you couldn't do this with just uh, the same way you do uh, ERB for XML? Do you just do ERB for JSON? Like. You could, and I tried it before I found Ravel. I tried Hamel and ERB, uh -huh. and it was about the most painful experience that I've had in the last year. Because that's the question. So, so Nate said, "Oh, we got to use Ravel." Like, well, why can I just do it with ERB? And he's like, "I, I don't know." <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Um, I think the reason that you wouldn't is because ERB is built to build HTML and structured document. This is also used to build structured document. But JSON and, yeah, and XML are right. very not the same. So that's the reason. Um, I didn't show this, actually. I think that if I... So also, just I don't know if it's, if it's clear, but that one Ravel file will generate both JSON and XML. So you don't have to have multiple view files. So that, mm. that single uh, Ravel view basically will, will do both JSON and XML. Let me show you that thing, possibly. <laughs> but sort. Oh, really? What library are you using to build it? The same speed. <laughs> All right, I screwed it up. That should work, though. Oh wait, controller. Okay, let's try this again. Now with the controller. All right, there you go. A little slower. Well, it's got to write so much more text, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> it's so much more readable. Yeah. I like all that readable text. <laughs> um, yeah, so you saw that was about two seconds of work, and it would have been one second, except I screwed it up the first time. So pretty easy to do XML and JSON stuff together without having to call different methods and define different things in your model. So cool. All right. That's all I got right now about this. I'm sorry that it's not more detailed with graphs and shit, but that's what it is. <laughs> you can probably make a graph real quick, right? <laughs> don't, don't. It's okay. <laughs> but if, if I was connected, I would go find the pirates versus like increase of temperature graph. All right, cool, I'm done.